Climate Now, in collaboration with Copernicus. Hello and welcome to Climate Now, our unique monthly update on what's really happening to our planet. Coming up in the programme, we have a special focus on melting ice, rising sea levels and what it means for you and me. The more we learn from Antarctica and Greenland, the worse the future looks. First, let's check the latest data from the Copernicus Climate Change Service. Over Europe as a whole, it was the warmest October on record, with temperatures 1.6 degrees Celsius above the 1981 to 2010 average. It was warmer, and here in Western Europe, it was wetter and very stormy. Storm Alex swept across the region, causing destruction, flooding and claiming lives. And that is reflected here in the climate data. All of these areas in blue saw more rainfall than average last month. Then if we switch over to soil moisture, we can also see that these areas in blue were wetter than average. Then in the Caucasus, Ukraine and Russia, it was drier than average last month. The other big news from October is the record-breaking low in Arctic sea ice extent. All of this area in red here is very low for the season. Basically, where sea ice should be forming, it's just not there. And this line here indicates what's known as the Northeast Passage, in theory a shipping route between Asia and Europe. And for the past four months, it's basically been ice-free. The ice is disappearing from parts of the Arctic and it's also melting on Greenland and Antarctica. Now it's important to keep in mind that melting sea ice in the Arctic doesn't raise sea levels because it's already floating on the Arctic Ocean. But melting ice on land does raise sea levels and it's a phenomenon which is accelerating, which raises the question of how Antarctica and Greenland will react as the planet warms. I've been speaking to several experts to find out more, starting in Germany. Here in Potsdam, Anders Levermann has simulated how sea levels will rise as Antarctica melts. His projections show that the one degree of global warming we already have will eventually raise sea levels by two and a half metres. As the warming increases, Antarctica really changes. The first thing that happens in Antarctica, and that's actually happening now, is that West Antarctica becomes unstable and we lose ice from West Antarctica. The next thing that happens from around two or three degrees is that Wilkes Basin in East Antarctica becomes unstable and also loses ice. Scientists are concerned that Antarctica's huge Thwaites Glacier will soon collapse, potentially causing a sudden sea level rise of over 60 centimetres. British Antarctic Survey recently found that warmer seawater is now melting the glacier as it reaches the ocean. The warm water is getting underneath this floating extension and melting that, and that's incredibly important because the, the floating part, the ice shelf, restricts the flow of the inland ice. When that starts to lose its integrity, the inland ice flows faster, so you put more ice from upstream into the sea. In Greenland, iceberg carving and surface melt has accelerated in the last 20 years. And now many changes are provoked by shifts in the weather, according to Dr. Ruth Mottram from the Danish Meteorological Institute. In the winter time, you know, we're seeing a lot of snowfall, which is very normal in Greenland. Um, we're seeing years with high snowfall, low snowfall, so there's lots of variability, but we're also seeing more rain falling. So although the same amount of snow and rain altogether is falling, more of it is falling as rain than snow. So there's a lot of different processes that are involved. In the last five years, sea levels have been rising at five millimetres per year, and the rate is slowly accelerating as CO2 emissions continue. For coastal cities around the world, Professor Leverman's projections make for sobering reading. If we reach four degrees by the end of the century, a business-as-usual scenario, this means a global sea level rise of more than 10 metres in the very long term. And that means that we'll have to abandon coastal cities like New York, New Orleans, Rotterdam and Hamburg. You can read more about rising sea levels and see all of the data presented in this programme on our website, euronews.com slash climate now. And I'll see you next time. Climate Now, in collaboration with Copernicus.